What's up, y'all? It's your boy C coming back at you with another episode of C's Retro and Garage. As usual, coming to you from outer space in the free state of Florida. Here to do a, I should say fix, a little problem that is, I think, a common issue uh, with the Ecotec 1.4 liter turbo engine. So this applies to all Buick Encores, uh, Chevy Trax, Chevy Cruze, Chevy Sonics, Buick Veranos. This is, and it's an easy one, not hard, don't be afraid, but what happens when you draw a little leak, as I've shown before, we've already replaced this guy, which is the coolant reservoir, but what happens when you get a leak farther down? Down here in the, you know, coolant water outlet or I believe they call this the coolant thermostat water outlet spout. Common issue actually if you ask me or at least from what I read of the people. So today we're going to fix it. Let's go ahead and have a look under the hood. Okay, so in my amateur opinion, uh, this is a common issue. Uh, this uh, is a shitty part stock. I don't know what, uh, excuse me with my light there. I don't know what revisions they may have made uh, maybe for 2017 forward. So I'm specifying here, this is 2013 to 2016. Uh, I regret I haven't filmed this one before, but we're going to do it now. Uh, this particular part, I believe, again, the way they actually, what they actually call it is the coolant, uh, coolant thermostat, uh, outlet spout. It's a bit of a mouthful. Why? I don't know why. Uh, because the thermostat is actually, you know, over, over here <laughs> somewhere, um, which I've changed it out before. It's a, it, that right there, uh, I will kind of... You know, I have my thumb kind of guide you down that way. That's the actual thermostat. It's a one-piece unit. Uh, if you're old school, um, then I'm, I'm not saying do it, but some people are old school. If your thermostat ever went on the fritz, you can't actually open it and rip it out. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just say replace the whole thing. It is just one part. Uh, this happens to be on my wife's 2016 Buick Encore. Uh, right now, the car's dry. I allow it to dry. There is a bit of a crack right around here, okay? This is a, a, a shitty part, uh, OEM. Uh, I bought a Dorman part to replace it. I've had uh, pretty good luck with the Dorman parts. They're not expensive. It's not difficult. Uh, I also bought the hose just in case. I'll get a better look at the hose, you know, um, once I get it off. Now, if you're looking at this part, you can see you got one, two, three actual hoses that are attached to it. This part here, and let me grab the replacement. So you can see this replacement here already has the part from there for the hose. Now, uh, this part to me when I look at it it looks like it's a, a wee bit bigger not a problem got a replacement hose just in case um, you can see that parts a little smaller you can try swapping out this little inlet uh, I've had occasions when this part the there's a, a little o-ring like a gasket in here that goes bad and you know when you replace the part the new part it doesn't seem to fit in I've doubled up on these before and actually sealed the, the coolant uh, it's a stupid design as you can see on this one it has a clip pulls out 
really stupid design. Um, and excuse my ignorance, or my uh, memory, I should say. It actually has four, four water hoses. One, two, three, and four. Okay, looking at the replacement here. Okay, this is for the sensor, temperature sensor. This is what's actually sensing your temperature as it's coming out. Boiling hot. Uh, and from the factory, these seem to be, well, I don't know, kind of thinly made, cheaply made. Uh, they get brittle, you know, being under, under the hood with all the heat, especially if you live in a hotter climate like we do here in the free state, uh, especially arid climates too. These parts tend to get pretty, uh, pretty hot, roasted, and they degrade. Uh, so this one we're going to replace. It's not a big job. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple job. There's... All right, a quickie. Um, I've gone ahead and removed the temperature sensor. It's just a little clip. Squeeze, pull, and I rem remove the intake hose. Once you do that, you can pretty much gain total access to it. Uh, don't forget to remove this clip as well. Okay, it does mount right on it. Um, it is going to be a... It's an E10. I don't know how well you can see that. Okay. It is an E10 uh, little um, T-sized uh, socket. And uh, it is pretty much as simple as just unscrew. Uh, take the part off. I'm going to take it off solidly, which includes the little hose that goes to the intake. And then we'll compare it once we get it out and on the floor. All right. Just so you know, uh, make sure that you put a pan... Uh, so I definitely miss some. Put a pan underneath your car because uh, <laughs> you will lose coolant. Uh, how much? Well, that's to be determined. Uh, but thankfully we have coolant. We'll put uh, whatever coolant back. I was able to salvage some. Um, you will have to do a little cleanup around the tranny uh, simply because you, you know, you spilled. Let's say I spilled, and you will spill coolant unless you get a very small pan. Um, you will, like I said, have to remove the intake hose. That's a given, just to get to it, uh, to unplug the uh, temperature sensor. And uh, once you do that, you sh it should be pretty smooth sailing. Now, as you can see, this is the, the dormant part, okay? Um, and you can see, oh, look at this. There's your, there's your problem right there. I, I just realized this right here. Uh, so uh, I gotta go retrieve that from the hose, okay? Make sure there's no debris or anything. Uh, so very carefully, but this is your problem right here. This was your leak the whole time. Um, I've had this happen uh, with this part, same part, the factory part, uh, through here before and here, and this part here. Uh, so yeah, this, this was going to go any day. Uh, it's just a matter of when the pressure gets enough that this slides itself right on out, and uh, you know then you're, you're fucked. Um, and this is the new part, you can see. You will need to retain this clip. Um, I'm not sure what that cable goes to that uh, connects to it. Retain this clip. Um, you know, just, just go ahead and pop it off um, so you can hang your wire there or zip tie it if you want. Um, I have a brand new hose for this. It is a little bit longer. This one was cut to fit originally. Uh, I can use this one here. Okay, Same hose. It requires you pulling this, this part out and putting this uh, new piece in. Uh, and it should fit right in there. Actually, not even. This one literally just, my mistake, just pops in that way. We'll leave that to the end. First, we've got to put this guy back out. Uh, back on, I should say. Let's get this clip off with a little flathead. And uh, take a look down there so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the intake hose. Uh, this is the hose that the original piece broke off. And I could kind of feel it with my hand. I'm going to have to... Uh, you know gently finagle it out of there uh, make sure I don't break it but you can see some fluid does spill it is what it is um, and uh, you can see where the fluid kind of leaked out a little bit uh, so yeah this is gonna stink a little bit for a little you know a little while until this all gets burnt up uh, but this is what it looks like you know get yourself a, what I do is get a regular old paper towel paper towel or even better if you have a newspaper and uh, clean some of this shit up um, and that's pretty much it. You put it back on, and uh, you're good to go. 
So uh, let me uh, clean this part up. Let's get the piece out and I'll show you what it looks like after it broke. And uh, here's the piece. You can see, look, perfect, perfect match there. Um, yeah, crack, broken, uh, toast. Uh, it is, this is where the leak was actually coming from. So uh, I did manage to get it out. Um, as you can see right here, uh, it, it, you know, it leaked this way and down the neck. So it, it appeared that the crack was actually here when it was here the whole time. This is exactly uh, what happened to me before on a, on a similar uh, setup. I've had this happen, and again, I had this neck happen, and I've had this part here go bad. You know, you'll figure. Whatever, man, it is what it is. So let's get the virgin one on. All right. I've gone ahead and I put the outlet spout back on. Uh, put a light here. Um, make your life easier. Uh, connect the back hose, which is that one. Connect that hose first. Then go ahead and attach your your spout. Uh, there's three screws. Again, it's an E10 uh, T size or E size, I should say. It's an E10. Um, there is no. I didn't find any torque specs on this. I've never have, so I just tighten them tight but I don't tighten the dog shit out of them because you don't want to damage the gasket. So just tighten them. You know, you can have a good look. See um, that the, uh, let me see if I can get get around there. The camera could focus a little. Um, just make sure that it's not too, you know, it doesn't look like anything is squished. That it looks like it's flush with the, uh, with the metal. Uh, where are you, baby? Eh, right there. And make sure it looks like it's flush with the metal. And, uh, that's about it. Uh, this cable here, I'm not sure what the fuck this is. Um, and somebody can tell me, I'm sure. Maybe it's the fan. I think maybe it's the fan relay. Um, that might be the fan relay. Uh, but, um, you know, connect it back. And then you can connect your two hoses here. Uh, the last one is going to be this guy, uh, which goes something like this. You can see the little hole there. See just how it looks. Okay. Or something just like that. Okay. So the last piece is like this. This clip comes off here. Okay. Put the hose in there. Okay. This little clip. Alright. Uh -huh. Put it right back on. Oh, okay, there is a certain trick to it. So I'll put your clip back on. Okay, right there. And the fucker still come raw. What the fuck? <laughs> Let's look at the old one. Alright, so I put the new hose on. Just to show you, this is what it looks like, and it has a little clip, okay? This clip goes right here, like that. You pull the clip out, if you pay attention, okay? When you pull the clip out, if you look carefully, you'll see that it does go in a certain way, okay? Look at this here as well. It has like a little groove. So put in your hose, put it in the right groove, okay? It'll be something like, let me do it like this, hold on. Okay. And in the case of this one, it goes just straight in like that. You hear a click. So you get this result. Okay. That's it. Take your hose, connect it. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is end up trimming this one slightly. It is fairly long. Uh, we'll go ahead and just trim it. And that's about it. We'll trim the hose. We're gonna trim it about there. Use the same clamp here to tighten. These are great by the way right here. Uh, and then start putting fluid. All right, the last part, start your car. Uh, and check for leaks. Uh, the places you're gonna have leaks are obvious. 
right on the block. You're gonna look, look for leaks there. No leaks there. Look at your back hose. It's hard for you to see it on camera. I can see it from my vantage point. No leak there. The main hose, the radiator, no leak there. No leak there. And most importantly, the little baby plug, no leak there. Uh, you'll know right away because you'll see the bubbling. And there's no leak here on the reservoir. Uh, I cranked the AC on to get this sucker up to temperature as much as possible. Waiting for that thermostat to open. Um, what I should do actually to get it much faster, let me turn off the AC. What am I doing? I should turn it off actually. Now turning off the AC should get it up to temperature a lot faster. Uh, because why? Well, as you can see, the relay over there shuts off the fan. The fan always turns on when the AC is on. Granted, in the free state of Florida, the AC is a necessity, you know, not a luxury. You will see a little bit of smoke. That's perfectly normal, because remember, we are baking some of that radiator fluid we lost, and right now it is starting to get toasty. Uh, but that's okay. Some of the smoke you'll see is actually me. Always remember, make sure you light up. Uh, nicotine keeps the coof away. And just watch it. Uh, you could watch it either from the comfort of being inside the car, monitoring the temperature gauge, making sure that it is going up. Uh, and you want to make sure that it is going up because you know that your temperature is indeed working. Okay? As you can see there, it is starting to warm up. Filled the coolant reservoir to the line, so you did suck some down. So at this point, we're gonna we're gonna kind of watch it. Uh, it's probably gonna start, you know, going down a little bit more and more and more. Uh, but right now, it's just a wait and see. So I'm gonna uh, finish this sucker off and let it get up to temperature. And then at that point, I will crank on the air conditioner so it makes sure that it does get hotter and make sure that the temperature maintains its, its range. Now you're probably thinking, what's the range? Okay, it should be, or at least my experience, right around there. It never quite makes it halfway. Okay, so right now, sit back. Relax, finish the smoke. I'm gonna go uh, have a beer. And that's the end of that story, boys and girls. I waited and waited and waited. The fan finally kicked on. The thermostat held steady. The fluid was at its a minimal loss. Uh, so go back tomorrow, put in just a little bit just to get it to that fill line. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That's all you gotta do. Uh, so, you know, when this happens to you, and it will, because at least for 2013 to 2016, or maybe from 2016 farther back, uh, considering it, the Ecotech engine's been out for over a decade. Um, now you know what to do. You know where to look. Um, the factory part is a piece of shit. Get yourself a uh, well, sturdy, more sturdy made, you know, American part uh, if you can. Uh, I went with the Dorman and it's worked out. I've done both of these cars already. And uh, it, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It is a little messy. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a slight bit more time consuming than it should be, and that's uh, all because you know you do have to remove the intake hose you know, to be able to get to it and take off a couple things here and there. Take your time with it. It's not, it's not a tough one. Um, I like to monitor things over the course of a couple days. You know, it's kind of like a human being. You know, the first 48 hours are the most critical, and after that, you're probably pretty, pretty good to go. So that's it for this episode of C's Retro Garage. I want to uh, thank you for checking it out. And as usual, I always say, stay safe, be ye kind one to another, peace out, and I'll catch you on the next one.